So I was thinking, um, like I was going back looking at all the old videos that I've done and I did see that one of my earliest ones was on coronavirus con consumption. And the reason I bring that up is um, in that video, I talked about whether you consume um, your news source from a mainstream media or an alternative media, it has the same effect on the body, uh, that being stress. Now, sometimes when we don't have an outlet for that, um, that restriction on oneself, because there's definitely a lot of restrictions getting um, chucked about here, there, or little um, mandates every now and again, or masks, um, which is a restriction to breathing by itself. Um, we feel frustrated within ourselves and without being able to express that frustration, because sometimes we look at frustration or its alternative name, anger, um, as something that is not safe to express or is dangerous to express or only crazy or angry people express anger. Now, anything that we don't express gets depressed, gets suppressed in the body, which then starts to constrict or restrict um, arteries, um, blood vessels, uh, even muscles, um, although a lot of people seem to focus on the muscles. Um, you've got fascia that wraps around the muscle. It's kind of like that white fatty tissue that you see on a steak sort of thing. Um, that's actually what's constricting. Um, and that actually holds a lot of memory. It's more um, fascia memory rather than muscle memory. Um, and we've also got the, the psoas muscle in our hips, which is also um, referred to as fascia, which runs and integrates through um, your chest and back. So definitely when we feel um, these strong emotions like, oh, we've got this happening now or, or I've seen this posted on Facebook, for example, about this and that and hypocrisy here, there and everywhere, um, that has an effect on the body. All these emotional um, elements start to compound into the body, start to restrict so when we see something that promotes something that makes us angry and we don't acknowledge that anger or we don't express it in a healthy way where no one gets hurt, including ourselves, um, then that restriction of oneself starts to happen. Um, that closing in on the body, that um, pulling in of that fascia, the, the, the heart not um, having the arteries fully open sort of thing because we are in a stressed constricted state, which is what I was saying way early in <laughs> when um, all this stuff started to happen was like what we consume, if we're consuming a lot of toxicity, a lot of fear, a lot of anger, then that's not going to cause us wellness in our body. So rather than restricting oneself, freeing oneself of these emotional confines, um, of these emotional frustrations, acknowledging also when it's happening and going, okay, rather than sitting in um, this pot of um, stress, I will move out of it and let go of it. But we'll do uh, an EFT tapping on restricting oneself. Um, so I'll do a setup statement. We do it three times, how I was trained. And, um, and then we'll move into the tapping points on the body. And when I say something, I'll oh, pause um, and you can repeat either verbally or in your mind, because even when you say, think a thought, you're activating a stress response or a sympathetic response in the body. So that said, if you're thinking a lot of negative thoughts, that's a lot of stress that's going on in the body. <laughs> um, and even a positive thought um, elicits a stress response. But yeah, so... When I say something, um, I'll pause. You can repeat either verbally or in your mind, and we'll just go through the, the points and just following along um, the points. So taking full responsibility for your own well-being, let's do an EFT tapping on restricting oneself, even though I've been restricting myself. There's been so much out there that I've been consuming 
and it hasn't been good for my well-being. I still love, honor, and accept myself, even though I feel so wound up, I feel so tense, and I want to enact change, but I seem to be reacting to world events, and it doesn't feel good. I still love, honor, and accept myself, even though I've got to promote change. I've got to go to the public and relate how it feels to be wronged or to be righted in my view of things. And nobody seems to be listening. And I'm terribly frustrated by that. I still love, honor, and accept myself. Going into the tapping points. All this restricting of oneself. I'm so confined. I'm so wound up. All this tension. All this tension in my body doesn't feel good. I want to move towards change, but I find it hard to move in my body. I find it hard to think sometimes because I'm so wound up and it hurts my body. It hurts my mind when nothing seems to move. And society itself doesn't seem to move. Move in the direction that I want. Move in the direction of change. It just sits there. And I just sit there dwelling away, stewing in the stress because nothing seems to change. But something does seem to change in my body. When I think about all these things, it does get a bit tighter. And it does get a bit harder to breathe. My stomach might get a bit acidic with all this negativity, with all this stress. And if I'm not doing something about it, if I'm not putting that fire out somewhere else in the world, I might be getting inflammation in my body. All the stress, all this cortisol in my body, flooding through my body when I see this wrong that I'm trying to ride in the world. But the only person I can change is myself. And if by changing myself, if that means improving my well being, so that I can help others with a clearer head, where I'm not gasping for air, where I can respond by calmly putting on the oxygen mask. so I can help others. So rather than promoting my own brand of fear, even though I might think it's right, 
I might promote wellness instead. Because there doesn't seem to be a lot of that being promoted lately. So I might promote how to get better. How to release a stress. Because a relationship, either with oneself or with the community at whole, should be a loving one. So I don't want to promote fear. I don't want to promote fear amongst my community or myself. I'm going to promote self-love. And I'm going to promote how to get better. And I'm going to promote well-being. And I'm going to unrestrict myself. And join a community. That's not constricting. That's rather promoting emotional freedom. And when I'm feeling emotionally free, I can be who I choose to be and heal how I choose to heal. So I'm going to let go of this anger now. I'm going to let go of this frustration. You can't grow a plant with a flamethrower. But you can nurture it with self-love. I'm putting down this need to be angry. I don't need to be out, outraged anymore. I don't need to be enraged anymore. I don't need to feel furious. I don't need to instigate change with anger. But I do need to wear away at myself with a steady stream of compassion and a steady stream of self-love. So I can let go of these feelings of anger. Because like turning on a light, the darkness within me just disappears. I don't have to force it away. And I don't have to get angry at it. I have to promote that self-love within. So I can share it with a community and be loving with everyone and everything in body, mind, and spirit. Taking a full breath in. And out. Uh, so when we um, want to grow something, whether it be a plant, whether it be a, a child, whether it be um, a, a, an animal, anything in our life, we tend to nurture that within. So rather than um, consuming something that's going to um, damage that um, growth um, or that self-growth, um, by, by lessening the intake of that, then we can actually start to promote a well-being within ourselves. It's like clearing away the weeds within our um, garden sort of thing. So we, so something natural can grow up. And it also takes self-nurturing, self-love from within um, because we tend to not want to get into relationships with ourselves, with other people or with a community where we're constantly having to fight we're wanting to join something or even with ourselves where we want to promote a loving aspect where we can 
um, reciprocate more of a healing aspect through love rather than being aware that there might be an issue and then bombarding everyone with that issue. Let's maybe bombard each other with, hey, how are you doing? How can I help? How can I share gratitude to other people? How can I um, promote wellness rather than promote a, a sense of fear? So whether our intentions are in our view of good, being what good is subjective, why not promote well-being? Why not promote love for each other? Because that is actually how a community comes together. And the one that is actually um, not actually performing to the community standard starts to get excommunicated. That's what that actually word means to be, um, to be ex of the community. So um, we don't want to get to a situation where we are not part of something anymore because then the loneliness will kick in. So then again, I'm Dion from Eflotion. I offer EFT tapping and Soma Breath and um, here online. So I'm actually here to, um, if you need an EFT tapping session, if you need a Soma Breath um, uh, meditation, breath work session, then definitely book in at eflotion.com. And let's start rather than being aware that there might be a clear issue here, rather than reacting to this issue constantly, thinking that will bring change, let's bring change within ourselves because we can only help ourselves first. And who knows, by helping ourselves first, we might actually help the collective whole. Peace on earth is actually quite feasible. We just need peace within first. If everyone's got peace within first, then we don't actually have to hope or dream for something. It just happens naturally by itself. So that's my thoughts. I'm down from Eflotion and I'll catch you probably in the next um, EFT Tap and Chat. It's good to be back.